close all in about 10 minutes, so we're going to have the Lenski for both the squad to take for like about another five, seven minutes, and then we're going to get started.
Uh, I want to welcome everybody to our Let's Talk About Violence workshop this evening. My name is Joseph Sanchez. We're going to be discussing a lot of different topics. Um, before we start, we want to go through the just right? We want to thank IS52 and Mr. Lewis in the back for having us. We got men's bathroom right here. No, no, ladies' bathroom right here. Men's bathroom downstairs by where you came in. Any other logistics? Do we need translators? Everybody here speaks English? <laughs> I speak Spanish, but I want to ask Spanish. No, no, I want to ask Spanish. I see you do it. Don't move up England. Is anybody need a translator? Yeah, I'm just asking Spanish. 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 Yeah, I'm just Okay, good. It sounds like everyone speaks English. Okay, good. Right. So don't move them again, they're back. Okay, good. So everybody understands the English. Uh, any other logistics? Rules, rules, rules. We're going we're, to we're do a workshop where we going to engage a lot of people. So we're going to have to have a room here raising your hands. I know it's not recording. But this type of set doesn't allow us to have an open, free conversation. So please, if you have a discussion, if you have an idea, if you have a concern, if you have a um, Anything you want to interrupt, just raise your hand and interrupt. Yeah, so good evening, everybody. My name is Alan Gonzalez. In terms of the rules, uh, we just want to urge you to be mindful and respectful of other people's opinions. Um, if somebody's speaking, please, you know, be respectful of the person that's speaking and raise your hand. You know, if you guys want to share something, it'll be very helpful in not only keeping a creating a safe space, but uh, keeping, you know, a respectful boundary for each other and just showing each other that we, we respect each other's um, thoughts and opinions, you know? So that's in, in terms of the community meeting rules. Yes, thank you. Any other rules that we're missing? Anything else? Okay, so let's just get started. We're a little behind schedule too, so we're gonna try to not rush it, but really get through a lot of information um, as soon as possible. So again, um, this is a Women's Violence Workshop. My name is Joseph Sanchez. I'm a facilitator. I'm a, well, let me just give you my background. I'm with the New York City Parks Department. I'm a manager at Toronto Park. I'm also a, a student at Teachers College from University. I'm getting a doctorate in public health and community education. I'm also, thank you. Thank you, I'm still in the middle of a lot of things. But, um, and we're also, um, we just got funded to do the third professional elementary movement in New York City um, from Congressman Espajal just funded us. We'll be starting our gang prevention, gun prevention intervention program too. Um, we're also, I'm also part of the Uptown Youth Collective. I'll give Al the minute to introduce that group, which is a coalition of partners like this. And today we want to have a meeting to discuss the immediate violence that's going on in the community, not just recently or immediately, but in the past also. So um, the purpose of the meeting, the purpose of this conversation is to identify problems that we're seeing or we're having or we're dealing with here in the community, um, come up with some solutions, and engage, get to know each other and network. So there's a lot to accomplish, but these are our goals, and I'm sure we can get it done. We have until like about 7.45, we have to be out of the building by 8 o'clock, so let's just keep in mind, stop me from talking too much, because I'm going to go on to help us. Um, so the agenda is going to be, we're going to introduce the Uptown Youth Collective in a second, I'm going to talk about the violence in Washington Heights and New York and um, in Inwood. Um, we're going to go into community problems, community solutions, how do we get involved, and then the next steps. Well, just a little background about me, just so you guys know. Again, these are pictures of me at John Jay, I'm an adjunct professor, and at Boston Community College. This is me at the Parks Department. 
This is me on reopening the high bridge with Mayor Bloomberg in 2008. I started the campaign to reopen the high bridge. The high bridge got funded in 2008, and now you guys know you can cross from high bridge in the Bronx to high bridge in, in New York City. Just, just to give you an idea of who I am, I mean, you guys know me, you can talk to me after. I'm going to pass it right now to Mr. Al. He's going to introduce the Uptown Music Collective. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is Al Santino. I'm the coordinator of the Uptown Music Collective. And who are we? Um, we're a coalition of youth organizations and youth service providers recently formed, and we are, our purpose is to engage and empower our young people who need to be lifted up. Young people who are going through difficulties and challenges, and we all know the scenario, especially since the pandemic. And if those of you are in programs and educators and counselors, we know that our young people are dealing with a lot of social and emotional issues, and they're also dealing with violence in many different forms. So we have three objectives as an organization. One, we want to provide what we call a safety net of resources, of referrals and relationships. So young people who are in our spaces, whether they're in a school, a program, in a park, or out on the street, we can direct them, engage them as a community for the resources they need, uh, and put some love around them and some resources. So that's number one. The second thing we want to accomplish is we want to empower our young people to be the leaders of this movement. It's going to be about young people taking responsibility to empower other young people. So we're going to be starting a teen advisory council, and young people will be taking leadership in our community. And they need to, they need to be leaders, right? Today, they need to be leaders in our community. Our third objective is to work across the community to address systemic issues that have been in our community for years, and, we, and an issue like tonight, violence, we all know, is an issue that we as a community must come together to address. Many of you probably know this, but the leading cause of death among children and adolescents is gun violence. This, this should not be. Um, this, should, this should cause us to action. And so we're here to, and this is our first meeting of sorts, we're here to uh, introduce ourselves, to network, to ask you to join with us. Um, we live in a wonderful community, Washington Heights, England, and if you're the Bronx, shout out to the Bronx. We live, in a wonderful, we live in a wonderful community of rich, diverse culture, and we have to stand together as one community in unity, right? Standing on the ground of justice, peace, and prosperity for all of our people. Amen? Thank you. Thank you, Al. And shout out to the Bronx. Yes, yes. That was from the Bronx. Uh, before we get started, I just want to introduce the man. You want to say a quick word about yourself, the bad man, and also the man. You know, I'm going to facilitate the back. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm glad you guys responded to the question. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alain Gonzalez, right? So briefly, I am an alternative to incarceration social worker, right? Um, I do a lot of community work. I work with mentally ill, formerly incarcerated, um, substance use uh, youth. Um, I am a part of a for-profit organization called Compassion, called Passing On, and we also do extra work to address some of the uh, systemic issues in the community in terms of teaching life skills, educating youth on sexual and productive health, um, providing mentorship, uh, you name it, you know, communicating with fathers, single fathers. Um, we do it all. Uh, I facilitate a, a fatherhood program in the weekend with compassion. Um, on top of that, um, professionally, I work with formerly incarcerated youth, you know, gun violence, murder cases, I deal with this every day. Um, as Joseph said, some of these issues are not only gun violence, but drill rap, and the social media platform, you know, going back and forth. Um, some of the work that we're doing now is literally just to create a safer community, 
We're trying to uplift, empower, and give a voice to the people in the community so that you guys can share your solutions on what you would like to be, what, what you would like to see in the community in order to address these issues so that we can make a safer space for everybody so everybody can live their lives in peace. Um, I'm here with Joseph, my good friend Naima, so I'm going to segue into her and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Thank you. Say that. <laughs> okay, so you know he, he gave a great introduction of himself, but I want to reintroduce him so that you understand who is to speak to you. So Alam is a formerly incarcerated youth. So he did go to jail. He dropped out of high school. But then he went back, he got his GP. He was a teen father. He graduated from college, he got his associates, and he got his bachelor's. After that, he got his master's degree. So he's a social worker, right, professionally. And on top of that, he also gives back by running a program for young men that became fathers at an early age as well. So it's one thing when you hear like a nice, you know, this is what I do, you know, this is who I am, and I happen to do this as well. So I just wanted to reintroduce along. Um, Everyone that's here is very passionate about this. It's not something new, just like everyone that's here today on a Thursday evening, um, ready to, to engage. So I just wanna say thank you for everyone that's here, and thank you Alon, thank you Joseph, thank you Al for being the visionary behind this. So to introduce myself, my name is Naima Silver Matos. I'm actually an alumni from this school building, IS-52. Um, <laughs> I, I run a girls' leadership program. I've been running it for the past nine years, uh, pro bono, and it's just because I believe that our girls need more positive role models, and um, and we're here for it. I have my own story, but at a different time, I'll share it. Uh, I do want to recognize there's other folks here in the room. Pedro Mejia from Catholic Charities. Everybody has their own 
whole definition of Washington Heights. The people from Washington Heights say that um, Inwood is not Washington Heights. The people from Washington Heights don't like Inwood. The people from Inwood don't like to go to Taylor Little Day and watch. It's a mess. And everybody has their own definition. So I, I look at it like, like it's a culture. You know, it's, it's an uptown culture. Whether you live on 168, which is technically Washington Heights, or if you live on Academy right here, which is technically Inwood, we all live in the same culture, which is Dominican, American, urban culture. Um, but there's a lot of other people in the, in the mix of things. So this is just a map. We could just go back to the map. I mean, I thought this one was probably the best one in the 155th, all the way up. You see all the park land that we have. So I'm giving, I'm giving it up right now for the parks. We have High Bridge Park, is like 155 acres. Inwood Hill Park is like another 200 acres. And you got Fort Washington, you got a lot of different parts. So we have a great community as far as transportation goes. A lot of communities in the Bronx, a lot of communities in Brooklyn, and communities don't have the easy transportation that we have. We have buses, we have the trains, and the easy access, and we have a lot of park lands. So the quality of life is supposed to be good, but then again, we have a lot of other elements. Next one. This is just a couple of demographics. We have 195,000 residents, 72% are Latino speaking, and next, 4% black. 68% high school graduates, which is all right. Um, I think the lowest one that I saw was like 62, I think, the Bronx, like, like low 60s. Um, the unemployment rate is also higher than the average, on um, 12% in Washington Heights, and 20% 20 of poverty rate in the community of Washington Heights, which is also a little high. Okay, this is another map. I really like this map. This map is that one map. Let's like, get that. Um, just to give you an idea of the Dominican culture coming into Washington Heights in the 1980s, we had in Manhattan 62,000 immigrants, Washington Heights, Dominicans. Totally in the city in 1980, like 125,000 Dominicans. Um, in 1990, it was 332. Um, in 2000, it was 500. Plus, so it was like half a million Dominicans living in um, New York City in, like, in 2000, the year 2000. Right now, they're, they're probably saying that there's like 175,000 Dominicans living in New York City, mostly now in the Bronx. But Washington Heights is still central to Dominican culture. This is a nice building of 155th and Riverside. This is like the west south corner of Washington Heights. It's a really nice building. I just want to share that with you guys. Um, all right, so everybody knows that the park's been going up. This is not just in Washington Heights, but this is all city. We had, um, the, this is in 2021, two years ago. Um, the shooting rate went up 77%. The murder rate is 36 up, 36% up. Gun arrest, 50, 67, I don't know that's man. 67% up, rate 30%. Bob is 12%. I have a question, and uh, if you guys have questions, you can have the index cards, you can write it, you get an idea. Make sure that you write it down so we can um, engage later. But why do we have drug sale rates? Like, do we document this? I know the police department documents it, but they don't make it public. And that's one of my, my issues that I have with these stats. You go to the next slide. Huh? They don't have proof crime either. All right, so this is, um, so uh, when we started building the Tarifa Messenger program, um, the, the precincts started sharing what they call hotspots with us because they wanted us to engage in the hotspots. I don't want to share the specific sites of the hotspots because I know people might live in one of those hotspots, and I want to, you know, um, bring that type of attention to your neighborhood. But just so you can see, in 2000, we had like about 12 shooting incidents. And we had about 19 victims. And in 2001, we had 23 shootings, and we had 28 victims. But there's a lot of shootings that happen that we don't document. So the number is higher than that. But just to give you guys an idea of how it's rising and what it is that we're dealing with. Shootings, victims, of shooting, and then murders. Those are three different numbers. No, 2001 is like recent for us, but 
will, will, will definitely work on it. 2022, there weren't really, there weren't, it was like from another, from another source that I didn't want to use that source. This is like the official NYPD downtown of this. Actually, um, the most recent statistics on police, there's been the, every precinct, uh, even with the NYPD in general, of course, out what's called, um, sorry, what's called the Comstat numbers. You can actually go online on the NYPD site and you can see the statistics uh, year over year um, for the seven major crimes. And and he's right, they are. They are still up. Those were high, but they're still up. Yeah, the seven major index crimes. Um, okay, I don't want to bore you guys with these stats. I'm used to doing these in school, so they know these numbers. I don't really, I'm not crazy about them. A few of the next slide. So here's the murder rate. Um, just to show you, 2010 there was eight murders in Washington Heights. 2020 there was 11. And there's been a steady increase. As you can see the numbers from 2010, we had um, 11, 10, 7, 3, 3, 4, 7, 5, 2, 10, 11. So we're back up. Numbers are not crazy like they were in the 80s and the 90s when we were kids. There was a lot of drug sales, a lot of drug shootings, but they're still, they're still high because this is random violence. All right, just more stats. This is this is more stats. If you have any ideas or questions about the stats, we're gonna come back to this. But this is the official 33rd and 34th precinct crime stats. Again, there's a lot of crimes that happen that we don't have. But these are the seven major um, index crimes that my man said. All right, so this is recent violence. Everybody heard about this, right? Um, I don't really want to get into it, but on the A train, there was a fight and it, it, it went viral. And you know, um, the kids actually got arrested. Does anybody have a brief history about what happened? You know what happened? What happened to the kids? Does anybody know? I heard that they got arrested. Huh? One got arrested, they didn't snitch, and the other two got away. All right. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Jocelyn from the DA's office. Let me give a shout out right there. I want to give a shout out to another AC from the BX. Thank you for coming. Is that Eddie Severo? Everybody, give this man a round of applause, please. Give this man a round of applause. I'm sorry, Melody. Don't want to know the DA's office. What was it? Oh, the Manhattan DA's office. So you guys got to connect there. All right, so this is recent. This happened on May 1st. This is what? March 14, two weeks ago. Next slide. This is the Dyke one that I know brought up December 26. Everybody knows about the lady, right? She got shot randomly, passed away. I don't know what happened, what happened with, with the dead and catch shooters. No. This is the one that on Bay Street and Naples. I was, I was this, this is where I would go up. I would go up on Bay between um, Sherman and Naples. This is a Frequent spot that I, that store was in there when I was growing up. It was like two stores down. But this is next to the pharmacy. Anyway, this is where the father got shot in the morning when he was with his daughter, the 10 year old daughter, son was up there. And this is what's leading what sparked this whole meeting. So, just want to remind you guys this is, of, this is more recent. And we're not even going to get into what happened from September to December. There was like four shootings on that same block right here. Here we go forward. And um, this is what is violence. So I want to ask you guys what is violence because I think that the reason why we can't figure this out and we can't prevent this is because we don't know what violence is. We don't know how to define it. We don't know how to look at it, and we don't know how to work with it. Violence. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in. Um, I don't want to start dissing anybody, but in school they always say that violence is a public health issue. That is contagious and that you know gets transmitted like a disease. I'm, I'm not from that school of thought. Um, I really believe that violence is the way that the way they look at violence is the way I look at HIV and AIDS. You know, violence is already you have AIDS. When you put, when you just just to do a quick metaphor, if you have HIV, this is what we're dealing with. We got to deal with the patient that has HIV and give medication before he gets to the state that he has violence. I mean, that he has AIDS. Um, the way we do, do we deal with violence, we deal with it like if it's an AIDS patient. And we gotta deal with it like it's an HIV patient. And uh, a lot of people don't believe in that, in that philosophy, but that's really what we're dealing with. 
we're dealing with the end results. The police comes at the end when everybody's killed, when somebody got shot. You know, uh, we call the probation officers after the fact. So we don't do prevention work. So we have to look at violence differently. That's why in all the workshops that uh, I lead, I always ask the question, what is violence? Next slide. So community violence is also different. Community violence is conflict resulting in uh, intentional injuries and deaths. This is community violence, not independent, domestic, or just one on one individual. Gun violence is community violence. Group violence, not randomly distributed violence. That means that violence that happens in certain pockets in certain areas, that's community violence. It's not coming from just from an individual perspective, it's coming from a social dynamic. And racial and ethnic violence. Minorities bear a disproportionate burden. So that means when this group of people are suffering from violence, it's usually coming from community violence. And just to give you a quick background, brief background of Washington Heights and violence. Um, do we want to invite uh, Eddie Silver if he just arrived so that he can share? I don't know if we want to invite Eddie. I don't know. <laughs> Eddie, if you want to come up and we'll speak with us real quick, um, I'll pass it mic because we got the recordings. So in 1960, the Dominican immigration camp was from the numbers. In 1988, um, there was a police officer that got killed in Washington Heights in the middle of some type of drug exchange and um, the police officer passed away. So that, that's kind of like the beginning of the history of the community and, and, uh, and the police department, police relations, the native police relations. On the 1992, Kiko Garcia got killed. There was riots in 1992. In 1993, we started seeing the Darius organizing in Bankers Island and um, all types of Dominican gangs started forming. In 1996, um, we started deporting Dominicans and just immigrants all over the city. Giuliani and Boys and um, Bloomberg. In 2018, we saw Junior get killed by gangs in Bronx, also Dominican, Dominican culture. And you know, we want to ask now in 2022, 2023, how are the police relations with the community. That's one of the priorities that we want to um, work with tonight. You could just go to the slides and see pictures. This is 1960, Washington Heights, that's around the corner, 207 Mish Ashram. This is my grandfather when he came in the 70s. Mm -hmm. The cars weren't that old, but he was, he was hanging out with the old cars. That's us in the 80s. That's the crack of the in 1985 to 1990, Washington Heights. Does anybody know which street this is? This Garcia Jewelry, it kind of reminds me of 181st. 181st, right? Between St. Nick and Audubon? Yes. So this is all Michael Music. There's a school that's named after him, and also a baseball field up in Hot This is the officer that got killed in 1988. This is the baseball field up in Hot Bridge. This is the officer that got killed in 1988 by you know, one of the community guys that was selling drugs. This is Kiko Garcia's funeral. This is the picture of the riots. <laughs> How many people remember the riots? How many people were told riots in the riots? <laughs> this is the uprising. This is the 1993 right design, and this is the Dominican gang started forming. And by 1996, we had deported 50,000 Dominicans got deported back to the yard. I know a couple of few of my cousins are over there, and a couple of people, but this is something that we can look at because this is the way the city dealt with the problem. Again, they dealt with it after the fact. They didn't work with it before. Next slide. This is just information we invested that so we can understand what we're talking about. Community and police relations, more pictures. You can flip through it. This is recent. You can flip through it. This is the junior situation. This is a junior situation. And this is an idea of an effective community violence intervention program, which is what we're trying to build. You know, we have intervention programs in schools, hospitals, and communities. This is an example of a community based one. But in schools, you know, we could obviously set them up, and also in hospitals. On the community level, 
intervention with communities that care. Again, this is an example of a community that cares and comes out to a meeting and wants to participate and invest some time in this type of program. Also, community communities, what we do in the park, tired on organizations, peace and prevention programs, and structured intervention. So, again, a lot of information. I want to report everybody. I'm at 713. And we're going to open up now for discussion. So we're going to have a few questions. Um, you can just shut that off. Um, we're going to get engaged now. But I just want to make sure that we knew what we were talking about. Thank you. So. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Right? And I'm going to just raise the point. Um, when it comes to violence, I'll give you a brief overview, right? Again, my name is Alan Gonzalez. I grew up in the South Bronx. I came to the, I came to New York City in the 1990s, late 1990s. I grew up in a rough neighborhood in the black community. And when it came to violence, it was not something that I was privy to, but it was something that I was exposed to. Different types of violence. Uh, microaggressions, uh, social emotional issues. These are things that a teenager experiences in the community, right? We're speaking about violence. So I see a lot of mothers here, a lot of fathers here. I want you all to be mindful that your voice is really going to make a difference in this very moment. How? Your voice is going to make a difference by not only allowing you to create solutions to the issues that are in the community, but providing an opportunity to not only collaborate with the individuals who are here to either run programs or fund community-based organizations, but you can also share your ideas in creating incentives, creating solutions to those problems, right? I want to ask you all, what do you think some of the issues are in your community? This is a, a genuine question. What are some of the issues here in the black community? What do you guys see? So we're just going to ask, uh, just raise your hand. We're going to pass the microphone. We are going to ask everyone to keep it to no more than a minute. So if anyone goes over a minute, we'll let you know just so that we're able to get as many people to share. As you're speaking, we have someone that's going to be transcribing. Um, we're taking notes so that we can also see it up there. Hay alguien aquí que necesita traducción en español? No? Okay. So let's get started. So this is your time to speak. So uh, would anyone like to share what their opinion is on what is one problem? There are many problems. What's one problem? I have not an opinion, a word or two or a sentence. We'll, we'll get into it. That's it. It's OK. One minute. One minute. She has a strong voice. All right. Please stand up if you feel comfortable. So you All right. Use the microphone. I don't need it. I don't need it. Okay. So not only am I an educator, I was born and raised in this neighborhood. I've been a teacher in this neighborhood for 26 years. Um, and I think that one of the main problems is we don't have enough programs for the youth in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do. They're bored. I think if we had more resources or more activities, more recreational centers, let's get them engaged. Let's do things with them. These kids want to dance. These kids want to sing. These kids want to rap. These kids want to draw. But there's nothing here. Catherine. I'm going to say, I want to say her name. I'm going to put some respect on her name. Catherine, can you say that one more time? Okay, okay. Yes. One more time. Yes. Put the message one more time. Okay, um, I said that I think we need more recreational programs for our youth. Because there's a lack of resources in the neighborhood. Kids don't have places to go to. There's not a lot of after school programs. There's not a lot of recreational centers. There's a lot of people that would love to be mentors but don't know where to go to get started or who can help them do it. Um, I've had people come up to me and it's like, where do I go? What do I do? Who can help me? I can come to the elected officials, but they can help me but so much. So. Okay. Thank you. I want to answer her real quick. Yes. I want to give you an answer quick. Make it quick. I want to make it quick, right? In terms of everything you just said, you're completely correct. You're right. A 
lot of youths are bored. A lot of youths have these, these issues where they idle hands do the double dirty work, right? We are the Uptown Youth Collective. So what that is is we are not only a collage of individuals who share the same ideologies. We are uh, we collaborate with individuals who run programs. So we have Catholic Charity in the back. We have Compassion here in the front. We have myself, I'm a social worker, and I also mentor. Um, in terms of the referral of product, um, the, re the referral system that we're gonna share later on, if you guys have anybody who you feel can benefit from these resources, you guys can collaborate with us and we can not only work together in terms of providing these resources, we can, we can refer them out to somebody who might provide the services that they might need. Because let's say somebody with a substance abuse issue, Okay, if we don't if we don't have those resources at the moment, I know somebody who does. If you if you need mentorship, if I can't provide that, or Al can't provide that, or 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 Naima or Joseph, we know somebody who does, and we can connect you with those resources. And not only, yes. <laughs> I hear you all saying that you have these resources, and they're available, you know, wherever you may be located. But how are you going out letting people know that this is out there? There's a lot of kids in this neighborhood, especially me being from Inwood, that don't, doesn't know that this is out. Yes. It's not being promoted. It's, it's, maybe they're in social media, but it's not a social media. You're not letting them know this is there. And it's not so how are they supposed it's, to know this There's a lot of youth also. Okay. Like, you know, we a lot you know, of maybe youth. getting tired of us going out to the streets and letting them know. I'm one of those people that I'm like, hey, let's do it. But where are you? Okay. It's like you're saying all of this year, but you're hidden behind. Where? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, next issue. No, we, I, I, I want to address this because I, I see, I, I like this. I like, you got a lot of fight, right? Mm -hmm. You you haven't heard from us. You haven't heard from us before, but we're here now. Not only are we new, they've been around for a while, but this is something that's, that, that we've been working on for several weeks, several months. Now that we are here, Take advantage of us now and let's collaborate because the solutions are here in the moment. Moving forward, we're gonna build that relationship and we're gonna make the changes that we wanna see in the community. Now, I wanna move forward to her question because I don't wanna turn it into a debate. After, let's sit down and let's come up with the solutions that you're, pre let's come up with a solution to the issues that you're presenting because I think that you're making valid points and I got a lot to share and I definitely wanna hear what you have to say. So let's connect after. Can you get out to the schools and the neighborhood and then Yes, we're about to. We're about so, to. So, do you want to present a solution now to your own problem? All right, so, we're sorry, we're going, to, we're going to reel it back in, okay? We're going to reel it back in. And this is okay, this is happening with the dialogue. This is good. We have a lot of different personalities. This is good. But we're going to take a moment to reel it back in. We're going to just establish how we're going to do this. Right now is the opportunity for you in the audience to share your perspective, share your opinion, share your experience. We are going to step back and not offer commentary on what you're sharing, okay? We're going to allow you to express yourself. We're going to take notes, okay? Then, after we're done with this section of sharing what the problems are and what the issues are, we're going to move into a dialogue on what are some solutions. So right now, our focus is what are the problems? And Catherine has shared one. Sure. It's, a, it's, a valid, it's a valid issue and it's real. Is that we have providers. Yes, that's what Alam is saying. We have providers and we're here to connect. But there's still a great need in our community. Our youth still need better and they still need more, right? So that's valid. Let's leave it at that. We're not going to question the validity of what you're sharing. So moving forward, who's the next person that wants to share what is an issue? We'll move to solutions moving forward. Okay, my name is Maureen Denny. I'm Ashley at 278. My daughter's graduating this year from 278. <laughs> I'm also a Girl Scout mom and a Girl Scout cheerleader with my thing she had to go. But my solution was, is we need a, a community center so all these ideas and all these resources could be in one place that the kids could access. And this has been tossed around a couple of times and I don't know. We need funding for that, so I'm just throwing it out there. So, and we're taking notes. So, right there, development of community center that is accessible to you. Thank you. Okay, let's keep sharing. What are the issues? What are the problems?
top of what he deserves. And thank you. Somebody else has their hands up? Yeah, I saw someone's hand up. Oh, right here. Listen, it was two of them. It was definitely somebody else. Right here. Uh, money. Okay, go ahead. Speak it up. And before you continue, I know that you your voice is strong, but there might be people that can't hear you. Yeah, so okay, just please please use the microphone. We're also live streaming, so that way folks can hear it. All right, so I'm a student at Randall, like I said, and I think that a big problem around almost a lot of communities is I was like, these kids really don't be having their father in their life. Like mm -hmm. I feel like a father holds a big role in a lot of kids' life. Like Teaching young men how to control their anger and control and stay strong and right. keep fighting for what they're supposed to do and not taking that easy route when they're going to be young. And I feel like that's the reason why the kids are so happy. We don't talk about it. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for going. Thank you for being vulnerable and taking the risk of sharing that. Like you said, it's not something that was spoken about necessarily in that way. And I'm definitely wants to connect with you afterwards. Who else would like to share? Good evening. Um, my name is Vasai. I feel Catherine and this young man made two valid points that I definitely agree with. Um, based on my observations and on my years in New York City, uh, the main thing that I've noticed is that we have parents that don't have enough time for their kids, either because they're working too much to be able to make ends meet, or the ones that just don't care. They just have kids to get more money on the end of the month, or the beginning of the month. And so, what happens is you have kids that, like Catherine said, they're bored, don't have nothing to do, they're being raised by computers, cell phones, that's feeding them nonsense, not enough programs, or maybe we do have programs, but we don't know about them. So I think this right here is perfect for us to put our brains together, collaborate, and definitely start making the moves necessary to solve these problems. I think the people here can make it happen. I feel we have the resources, we just don't know about it, but now we're finding out about it. So it's about us coming together and making it happen. Hello, my name is Melody. I was thinking, as I was sitting here, you know, I'm a very spiritual person, and I feel like this is the perfect space. We don't need a community center. I think this auditorium was big enough to create a space for the youth at least once a week. And I'm willing to offer my services, you know, to start that. I'm good at organizing. Joseph knows. I think this is the perfect place right here, if you ask me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ashley. I grew up here all my life and I work in this building. I feel like one thing that's not said is be obvious is an easy access. So since I was a kid, it's been easy for kids to get drugs in this area or guns or weapons. So there is programs. There's a ton of programs in this neighborhood itself. There's resources, there's money, there's everything. But the kids have easy access to everything that's negative. Like every single store here that sells drugs, I've seen kids go in, I've seen kids buy. I've seen kids buy weapons. Obviously I can't do much about it, but that's not my place. And this is happening in this building. I've seen kids go outside and I've seen kids with weapons in their hands and I can't interrogate them, but I know they got it from somebody else in the street. I've seen kids that recruited to gangs in this, this very same corner. So it's missing easy access. So the kids network with each other, the, the kids, Tell each other, hey, let's go outside and let's do drugs. And they're gonna listen to each other. The kids are listening to each other, and the kids are getting from each other, and the kids are getting from the street. The adults that are outside are supposed to be the better for one of them, or the ones that are catering to them. So, and I, but I also agree with him, it's also a 
lack of parents and lack of your mentors in your life and it's just I guess family. A lot of the kids are just building people who tend to like do these things and these negative things are the ones that are lacking a parent in their lives and lacking that proper supervision. Not even proof supervision, just lacking that type of love, period. So they go outside and they look for another ways. So I don't think it's the resources I with this. People come to the building, give our parents give our money, and I see them, and they, and they use it for programs. Today, we, today a new broadcaster came to talk to kids about a program they just opened up for a new yard. It's not the money. It's just the fact that it's easy access, and they know, like, it, I don't know how to explain it. It's just easy access for them. So that's the thing. It, it is so difficult to not respond after each person, but when you practice discipline, you keep going. Keep going. I, I'm also getting anxious, that's good. Uh, Ashley, born and raised in England, I got to live with the young people. Also, I'm not an advocate of, of Temple United. And Kathy actually was one of my teachers from the PS5, so I'm actually sure it's what I this evening. I agree with Ashley, this young leader, from the way in the back. It is actually so vital, especially in England, that, as I just said, there's so much easy access in this neighborhood. It's like, we're at the point where it's like, okay, we're telling you guys day in, day out. We literally hosted an event last September regarding this situation and everything that has to do with gun violence. Last time we put all oh, really tested on that was one of the most ravenous summers from 2005. 2005, I remember, was the worst of the years of living in England because of all the deaths that were happening back to back each week. The fact that you guys can sit here and say that we have resources, where are they? What buildings are they in? We've been going door to door, but there's social media, word of mouth. We've been making actual efforts. You see, it's easy access to get these resources, but we've been doing this. I'm going to be 28 this year. I was. 12 friends I could think of before they even hit 16. I lost my friend who was an officer last January. What are we doing to change the preference of this neighborhood? You guys are saying, yeah, we got resources, we got access. I don't see you uh, in the forefront when we out there. Or even when we as a community came out as a whole, I didn't see you out there. It's like she said, kids have so many accessibility. No, no, definitely I've seen it, but in the entirety of the whole, because you guys are also represented as a unit, your unit team wasn't there for you guys as team ladies. And it's disappointing for that because at the end of the day, we ask our members of our leadership, hey, we need assistance here, we need help here. And as much as we're voicing that, it's like, how can you hear us between up one year? And that's what it feels like. It's felt like that for years. Can you summarize your problem? The violence. The, huh? the violence within guns, within cells, within groups. So what she's saying on top of it. So what she's saying is, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is it's not only is it easy access, it's having access to us as a as a as a collective yeah. for the resources that we are yeah. presenting. Yeah. And, and, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, is that and building a relationship with the community and collaborating with you to right. address these issues. Because right. even when we do voice it okay. into white collaborate, it's like we do, and it's like, okay, I'm going to invite you to get back to you. So it's we collaboration. Don't you until you're so it's collaboration. The, the overall issue is collaboration. The lack of communication to collaborate, okay. and the miscommunication that comes from collaboration. Because so, it's all a misinterpretation for me. No, no, before we move, hold on, hold on. We do, we do have to pause and we do have to clarify. Um, just because we're having this dialogue, there's a lot of you. You, 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 you. We, as a collective, we're just getting started. So, point blank, we're just getting started. So there's not that, oh, I haven't seen you in the street, I haven't seen you out here. I was out there, Catherine saw me. I was there. The girls leadership program that I run, I ran, I started it in 2014, with no money definitely, whatsoever. Definitely. And what did I do? We started it in the province. And we've been running it for nine years since I completed it. Girls leadership program, I got the pictures, I got the website, I got the receipts if you want to see me, right? But it's not just about me. I'm just letting you know, like we we have been out here individually. We are we are coming together as a collective now. You know, I hear your frustration. I just want you to know that it's not a us 
versus them. We, we need it together. We, we are us. We are us. Literally, okay? Like, um, I used to run a, a, a literacy program in my lobby, and she won't let me lie. She, she works at the school, I used to be two. My sisters and I, we used to run a free program, and then Literacy Incorporated um, replicated that program in reading lobbies across the, the neighborhood. That was back in 2012. So, like, each of us have been out here individually doing stuff, you know? Um, but we recognize that there's only so much we can do individually. And I love your passion because I know you've been out here and you've been doing it just like everyone else has been doing it. And since we're here, what I feel in the spirit is that it's almost like we're coming together as a community and we're about to, we're about to enter a revival. We're about to start, or we're about to, I, I feel it, that's what I feel in my spirit, that it's going to be a revival in a sense because there's just so many different elements and so many different things that need to be tackled and it's going to take all of us, you know? So the literacy, if you, because I don't want to, I don't want to go back and forth. But this was a local literacy program on Academy Street, and so we worked with the kids on on that block, and we held it on a weekly basis. Um, so we were able to to reach out to the families in that area. It was just three of us, right? And we're doing it for free, and we're, we're we didn't get on Univision because we don't do things to get press, right? We just did it to support local. So I just want to invite you to shift the mentality of of us versus you, like, it's, there, it's, this it's is not, this not us versus you, like, it's come we, together. Are, we are us. Okay. Oh, amen. All right, just, we, 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 just, we got 10 minutes okay. to do community and problems and community solutions, so. But he had a question. So yeah, after yeah. him, we can switch into the solution. Just be quick, yeah. man, for the time. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, another one I want to do that I've got to do <laughs> so, I've been working in this community for over uh, 25 years. I'm a guy that's been a student of mine. That was my brother that was speaking back there. And um, I've been in the building for about 15 years. And something that I've been advocating for a long time, I want to take back something that someone else was brought up, is that in this community, the Inwood community, I know that Joseph said that Inwood and Washington Heights is the same thing. But once you pass a certain level, uh, certain streets in Washington Heights, and you start going to a church, it's called Inwood, there is no accessibility of services that Washington Heights have, you understand? And what is this? It's a nook in Washington Heights, but the nook in Washington Heights, I mean, up here, that they don't know they go anywhere, really they have, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like a little boy. And it's something I've been advocating for a really long time. We talked about trying to open up a community center up here. Also, you know, as a service provider myself, yes, there is, and I agree with the collective that there is services, a lot of, a lot of, of services, but some of those, some of us who provide services, our arms are binded with the number of participants we need to serve because our contract only allows us to serve a certain amount. And it's not the case that we have to turn away. It's not fair because for a really long time, I've been asking for, you know, and advocating for, and asking for all for everything, including after school program, including the school program, including, you know, a um, program for high schools as well because we provide school program for kindergartens all the way up to middle school. And then it's a boy with programs for high schoolers. And then those are the ones who our industries get get you know enamored with the street life and then they're the ones that you know the um that actually says they get recruited by the you know, streets because there's really is no more service for them besides SYP or maybe even some type of community services. So you know there is while there, while there is services, the, the number of participants that we that we need to provide services for is very limited and in certain populations there is almost zero to no services, especially up here in Inwood. And we can say we can send the kids from Inwood down to Watson Heights because while this is a forum about youth violence, and one of the things that we have to uh, acknowledge is that the youth in Inwood, you have people youth in other uh, in other parts of the community as well. So we can't send our kids down to Watson Heights and then start to send them to a dangerous situation because when they come up here is something that we have to do is advocate and make sure that we protect each other. And then lastly, another problem that we have up here in Washington Heights, this is the only school building that actually opens the door for, for people in the community or for kids and adults to provide this type of forum, a space for a vacation space for kids to actually do things up here. This area in Inwood has at least six or seven schools, all the doors closed, nobody, none of the principals will open the doors. 
this will only build the effect of the doors. And I have to say that I'm the first one that advocates anybody who wants to do anything in this building. I'm the first one to say, just come over here. I'll do the, I'll do all the labor for you to make sure this space is available. But this shouldn't be the only space. And then when there's no reach, uh, no real space to open up a community center, the, the, the schools themselves should be a community center for these kids to get them off the street and get them to do something to distract their minds. This shouldn't be the only building. You understand? We have 366, buildings always closed. 278, buildings always closed. How is that? Buildings always closed. Charter schools, buildings always closed. They're not all charter schools. Some charter schools do open the doors. Some charter schools do open the doors up here. But there's only, I think, I've only said probably two out of all the schools that end up here because I am talking about later. There's another building that always open for this community. It's not fair right that there are only two of these schools in this whole community should have the burden. Uh, we should also speak with the school administrators to say this space is available for the youth as well and do something about as well. So, yeah, I'm sorry.
those cases are being returned to appear before a judge like myself. And many of those cases, if, you, if, if we take advantage of the services that you're given a desk appearance to get, then you can get that case diverted, the, the dismissed, the district attorney can decline to prosecute. Um, so take that for what it is. I'm not here to tell you what to do, um, but I do want you to know that, that right now that's, that's going on. All right. Th I thank you very much for your time, and I just I, I really appreciate everything that I've heard about all that you've shared. Thank you. Thank you. Can you get that information to us in writing so we can put it out? Okay. Yeah, because we want to capture that and make sure we get it out. All right, awesome. So while Al is getting that information, we just want to ask if um, we have so many um, support, part of the support team, and we can introduce them in a little bit, if we can just pass out the index cards. And what we're going to ask everyone in the audience, we're going to pass out index cards and a pen. In the front, write what you see as one of the major issues are. And in the back, please share what you think are one of the solutions or ideas that you may have. Okay? So that's just so that we can get everybody's input, because not everybody's comfortable speaking in public. And now what we're going to do is we're going to transition into the solutions part of the dialogue. Okay? Yeah, we are gonna we are gonna have to get we're gonna get a for right now. I'm just sharing that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Niall. I go to Beacon High School, and I just want to talk about the um, how like we have a lack of resources, including internships. Like mostly talking about money, because a lot of these people that are out in the streets in gangs and just trying to sell drugs, they're trying to survive and get money. So I feel like we just need to teach them a new strategy to how to survive with using money and resources, like investing to stocks, NFTs, and also businesses. So they can work into being millionaires and being like something that they can live, like you know, under. You know what I mean? And like give, like pass on to their families. Mm -hmm. You know? Thank you. Yeah, that's why. Thank, Thank you. That is amazing. We're definitely writing that down. Yes, we're writing that down. It's almost like that's why it should be year round and, and offering more, right? Yeah. One more. Yes, right here. One more. Wait, well, the, the young lady over there, after, after the gentleman here, the young lady has a solution as well. Wait, wait. He, he had his hand on the wall. He had his hand on the wall. Have you guys seen it? Actually, go ahead. I'm going to pass over to her. So I just wanted to unexplain. I actually not have to think of it. Hold on, hold on, guys. One mic, one mic. Uh, my name is Wayne. I'm not going to go to his guest today, but uh, I do have some experience with this. Um, it resonated with me what the young lady was saying here. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Ashley. Ashley. Uh, about, you know, different community organizations doing different things. Like, part of the challenge, Ashley, is that a lot of the community organizations, like yours and others, are people in the community doing work. And believe it or not, while you may think you have a big footprint in it, it's, it's a small part. One of the things that I learned in my community up in Brooklyn, one of the things that I learned in my community that needs to be a part of the community support there, what we learned is that people like you and people like Alam and Naira and all those other folks were doing the work in the community, they just didn't know about each other. And so what my community board started doing was, and this was about seven years ago, we started what's called a nonprofit roundtable, where we specifically went out and got the information for every nonprofit or community-based organization in the community, in our community district, and sat it down the table along with all of the representatives from the city and state agencies and had them introduce themselves and what their programs did uh, in the community and how did they connect and collaborate. What the result of that over the last seven years is that we've seen an, an increase in community engagement around those programs by 30%. So when you say that, you know, you're out there doing stuff, you know, Naira saying she's out there doing stuff, you guys are just going to cross paths. It's, 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 but the part of the challenge is, it's not even misinterpreted, uh, or misinterpreted, it's just lack of access to communication, period. And people operating in silos. And like you said, there are people out there who call and try to collaborate, and they don't connect back because they don't know who you are, they don't know what you're doing, they think you're trying to come and take over. There's a lot of stuff, but having a roundtable helps clear a lot of that up. And like I said, 
the region of the The other thing is, I uh, love that this young man touched me because I was going to say it. I saw the post outside, I was very happy. I'm a volunteer and a former youth service manager in my community board and a volunteer with UICD, helping to get youth employed in the summer youth employment program. And it's not just summer youth employment, there are six what they call Workforce Connect programs that DYCD offers where young people have an opportunity year round to earn money. Yeah, we just need to bring that information here so right. that our kids have access to it. So, I mean, there's a site, and what I can see, one of the biggest providers in uh, Manhattan is actually just across the street, in with community yeah. services. That's what it was described. So, parents should be trying to connect their kid with that guy right there. Right there, Jody, stand up. <laughs> so parents should be trying to connect their kid with that young lady right there. And if you're in this community and you run a business, you should be trying to connect with that young lady right there and hiring you for the summer. And so why is the deadline? Yeah. And then she's she's gonna work. Yeah. Watch the young lady. Yeah. I just wanted to The deadline is tomorrow, however, I think it's very likely that it might be extended another week. They haven't officially said that it will, but I'm hoping they do. It, it's extended every year. They just can't tell us that it is. <laughs> so it hasn't been officially extended, but hopefully it will. But for anyone that's interested in SYC, whether to be a partner program to host participants for the summer, or if you know youth that need to apply to the program, please come here. <laughs> okay, hello, my name is Jessica. I go to UVA and I have a school for business owners. Not from Manhattan and not from Brooklyn and that. Um, my school, we have a lot of opportunities. We do have a lot of resources. For my school, I'm already in SYP. I don't have to go through the lottery, I went through it. I have I do volunteer work, I have a center that's in my project. If I wanted to find a center, if I wanted to find resources, I search it up and I find where I have to go. Yes, and the reason why I do that personally is because I'm the one who's seeking out for help. I've seen a lot of kids that are already gang related, doing drugs and all that, flip their lives to a whole 360 or I can't do that right now. But <laughs> they turn around their whole life after them searching out these resources. And it's not even, I feel like when kids do drugs and do all these bad things, it's because what nobody's reaching out. Nobody's trying to help them, trying to find out what's wrong. And if they're lacking a parent, or if they have their parents, and they're still going through something, no teacher, no guidance counselor, no social worker is trying to sit there and actually talk to them and trying to help them. They will either just suspend them, expel them, and help them, make them learn their lessons. Or even worse, or even worse, ask somebody that went through intuition and asked somebody that had to go through it, they would just send you to the hospital and think that everything will be okay after it. When once you come right back, that's basically what happened. Nobody is actually trying to sit here and reach out and try to help you when y'all are just trying to, to push us back. Even with teachers, I understand that some teachers are the best, or some teachers just like to add on and put hard work on them. They don't know that that's harming them even more. That's why kids skip class. That's why kids don't go to school. That's why kids stay home. What's your name? What's your name? Yes. Can everybody give her a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you for, for standing up. Thank you for, for having a voice. Because she has to be the last one. She has to be yeah, the last one. Last one. This is a solution or problem? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anna. I'm a special education teacher. I'm also from. Um, Grace Tabernacle Church. Um, for the community solution, I think that's something that's super important that ties into everything. Is kind of similar to what Jessica said about the individuals that are being put in place for the solutions. They need to be relatable to the kids. Kids make connections. <laughs> so, um, along since you work with people that are incarcerated, with um, also young fathers. That's definitely people who should be mentors, people that they can relate to. 
because I'm sure all of us in the school, in assemblies, we will listen to people speaking, but they have nothing to do with us, or they can relate to us. Like we think, oh, my mom doesn't know about going through because she doesn't, she she would she, and she never went through, for example. Um, so that's also like an important thing, making sure that you guys have that we have people that volunteer, share their stories, so that our kids can feel like they're not alone. This is not the first time it's happening to someone as well. What's your name? Can everybody give that a round of applause, please? Yeah, um, we got like five minutes left. You want to say something real quick? Go ahead. You said you want to take more initiative? Yeah, it's our understanding. It's our understanding. So, because it's like, even with this program, the only reason I'm here is because of my cousins. And these are, he's still many of my age. No grown person has gave me any energy that will make me want to listen to them. None of them know what we want. No one, none of them understand the other side of that. So, for the people that don't want no more, Adults need to learn how to get to those people. Okay, I want to, I want to, give me all the And I want to, what's your name? What's your name? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First, we got to acknowledge him. Keon, thank you. Honestly, give him a round of applause. Now, hold on, before, before you say something in the mic, right? Keon, I want to respond to you, right? So, in terms of, Dealing with adults who can relate to you, right? Try not to write everybody off now until you have an opportunity to not only get to know us, but to see what we have to offer. Now, I want to share a little bit about myself, right? Make it quick. I'm going to make it super quick, right? 30 seconds. All right, that's yeah, too quick. We have to, we have to. <laughs> right? So, in terms of your first point that you made earlier about lack of fatherhood of programs, lack of parental support, paternal support, a lack of mentorship. I myself am a mentor, and I am a therapeutic, uh, um, no, my fault, no. Right, so I myself am a therapeutic ther uh, a therapist. During the day, I'm a social worker, and I work with Ms. Caroline Davis right here. She runs a, a for-profit organization called Compassion. We run, this is her program, but I facilitate it. We run a fatherhood program in the Bronx. I know it's not Inwood, but we would love to collaborate with somebody who, where we can bring this, the, these resources to Inwood. And not only do we have these programs in her organization, but there are also other organizations here who are doing the same thing. So it's like, before you write us off, listen, hear us out. You know, we, 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 we can work together. I can tell that you got a vision, and I can tell that you want to do something. And I can tell that you and all your friends are ready to do the work. So what can we do together in terms of making this, uh, addressing this issue on a community-based level so that we can bring the change that we want to see? That is true. And you said you were third, right? Yes. So, do I want to like my business? Hold on, if you can hear me. I'm not going to okay. so understand. In my life, I'm, these violent situations and problems, that's what I'm into. So, having a parent that could I know that like I could not talk to and have all that. I've been to third because I had therapists speak with me. Like, but I'm telling you, like, I would, there's a lot of talking about it, okay. but not a lot of seeing it okay. or talking about it or real efforts of pushing it. Okay, give me a round of applause.
they're DOE vendor. I'm certified as DOE vendor. There's money in the education system specifically for DOE vendors to provide services to public schools. In fact, tomorrow is the deadline. And he'll tell you I was on the ground walking to schools to make sure it happens. Third, I would also say um, uh, collective, just, just as you guys have been saying, communication. You know, many times we don't know what our neighbor's doing because we're so stuck in seeing what we're gonna do. But long story short, I'm here to give any of my resources, whatever you need, I will make it happen. Trust and believe, that is my word, you can hold me to it, I will find it, I might not find it tomorrow, right? But I'll make sure that you have it. I'm an April of Randolph alumni, okay, hello. <laughs> and this is close to home, I used to work at PLO in Washington Heights. I'm a living testimony that you can build your own and make sure that it might not happen overnight, but it'll happen. <laughs> Okay, so. No, I just, honestly, it's, it's super quick. In, in response to what, what you said, Dion, okay. we want to wrap it up. I'm going to urge you to connect with us after this so that we can have a conversation. But just to briefly let you know, I've been in and out of jail since I was 14 to 21. I became a father at 16. My father's in prison serving 56 years of life. I've been in and out of gang wars. I've, shot people, I've been shot, I've done all these things, and now I am a social worker. So in terms of what you're saying, that you need a therapeutic, um, that you need therapeutic su support and mentorship, you can connect with me on a, on a personal level, and we can exchange numbers, and we can have that conversation, right? In the, in the daytime, I'm an ATI social worker. I work with nothing but gun cases and murder cases. I work with individuals fighting life cases. I work with individuals who are fighting gun charges. We do the community work. In the evening, I, I, I work with, with and for Caroline to run her program so that we can address the lack of mentorship that's in the community. We collaborate with Brad, Bring Rise Against Gun Violence. We run a, a, men, a, we, we run a, a, a fatherhood program in a school in the Bronx. And if, and if you guys want to see the same thing here, collaborate with us, collaborate with the, the Uptown Youth Collective, and let's make this happen. You know, but let's collaborate with each other because we are a family. We are all one. Let's not turn it into like this, this back and forth. Let's, let's come together and let's come up with a solution so that we can make the change in the community. I'm not looking for, I don't need to be the spokesperson, neither does Lima or Joseph. We're doing this because we care and we want to see a change. It hurt me, my mom. I, I, God forbid somebody kill my mom. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a professional, but I, it'll go left. It'll go left. So when I heard that, that bothered me. So I'm doing something now. Joseph is doing something now. Dinah has been doing something now. If you guys have young ladies, she runs a, a program for FEMA. She does the same thing we do. But for young ladies, connect with Naima. Connect with Al. Connect with us. We can even connect with you. You guys have been doing the work. Okay, so let's collaborate. Let's do something so that we can bridge the gap and make the change that we want to see. So a great conclusion, right? Um, Cameron, the, the organization you started last summer, Uptown United, right? So Uptown United should be part of the Uptown Youth Collective. Definitely. You know? So moving forward. And I also started a grad school after that. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So oh. Feel free to share that. And we, and we can share that. We have a consumption of email investors, so we can share that with people as well. So if anyone here is part of an organization, whether it's a nonprofit or if you're a business, whatever it is, if you're part of a church, whatever you're part of, if you want your organization to be part of the collective, this you don't have to jump through hoops. Just let's just let Al know who's in the back. Um, and the then when we meet shirt. again, we'll all meet together, and then we'll actually talk about the groundwork that we can do together. Because everyone's doing it on their own, so now let's just keep connecting with each other. Does that make sense? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Round of applause, please, everybody. Round of applause. We need overtime. We need over $500 to pay for the overtime. <laughs> okay, okay. Guys, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys go with the Uptown News Collective. We're going to continue. This is not the end, this is the beginning. You're going to receive an email. We came up with seven problems and seven solutions. 
And I want you guys, we're going to email this to you guys so you guys can have a fresh in your mind and we're going to get together again within the next month. So please, can I get a round of applause and walk for yourself? Also, can you raise your hand if you come back? Thank you guys. We're going to take it from here. Uh, we ran out of time, but if you guys want to play the jokes for three minutes, I appreciate it. Yes, yes, please. Before, hold on. Before you leave, hold on. Before you leave, leave. Before you leave. Before you leave. Before you leave. We want to urge you. Leave. Sign your name in, leave your email, leave your phone number so we can connect with you. And before you leave, let's at least enjoy the therapeutic drum session and let's let's conclude it with let's conclude it with love. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, round of applause, please. Let's get, let's get a round of applause for each other. Let's go. Thank you. Drums.